everyone today we're going to focus on night store problem which is focused on recursion and backtracking so what is night store well for those of you who may play chess we know how a knight moves in a chessboard in a 8x8 chessboard it moves in a l-shaped direction so this is referred to as a knight so a knight always moves in an L-shaped pattern from here to here or from here to here or from here to here so if we look at this image we're supposed to come up with an algorithm in which the knight can a single knight must travel the entire chessboard and it must reach each and every block in the chessboard it cannot miss so as I told you let's uh, look at this particular example here so in this image we see the first column first row as zero right that's the initial position of the knight from there it travels in an L-shaped pattern to position one from there it travels another L-shaped pattern to two and three and four and since the chessboard is empty beyond this point it travels in an L-shaped pattern following the rules this way to 5 and then 6 7 8 and then again L-shaped 9 so this is how a knight travels in a chessboard so how can we come up with this algorithm actually this type of algorithms is really helpful to understand the basics of recursion and backtracking so let's uh, try to come up with a solution for this problem so I have my setup right here so first thing we need is a two-dimensional array let's call it solution we know it's a chessboard so we can just write 8 by 8 and as uh, I showed you in the image, it starts from zero, right? The position, the initial position is zero. So the chessboard must be pre-populated with some kind of value that is not zero. It's totally optional. You can also start from one, two, it doesn't matter. So in this case, we are trying to come up with this particular solution. Let's gonna, we're gonna start from zero, which means that the chessboard must be pre-populated with another number other than zero. So I'll choose a negative number that is minus one. So let's get started with it. Minus one. So at this point, our solution array is populated with minus one in all of its rows and columns. So let's create another function right here, which takes in this uh, pre-populated array. I'll say print tor, which takes in the solution array. Let me call it right here. Consider this diagram right here. So let's just try to figure out all the possible path of the knight. So I told it travels in an L-shaped path. So considering this diagram, L-shaped comes like that and right here. This is one position, uh, zero being the initial position on the graph. So from here, there's another position the knight can travel, which also is an L-shape. So this was one and this is two right from 0 to 1 to 1 to 2 from 2 to here one step so it's an L shape another path is from here to here another path is from here to here the same follows on this side of the graph as well so in total the knight can move in eight possible positions from its initial position um, assuming that it is on the center of the chessboard 
So if we try to figure out the points here, this point is 2 and 1. And this point is 1, comma 2. And you can figure out the rest of the point by yourself. And now, if we see, we have two values right here, x and y, right? This is x and this is y. Which means, in our two-dimensional matrix, we also have rows and columns, which is quite similar to this path. So, let's try to come up with a possible solution. If you figure out all these points, you will come up with something like, let's create an array. Let's call it as xpath. And the possible path of all the things will look something like 2, 1, minus 1. minus 2 minus 2 minus 1 1 and 2 and for the y okay so first thing I told you is 2 and 1 and 1 and 2, right? Look at this first, first uh, number of x path array and the first number of y path array. It's 2 and 1, which is similar to here, 2 and 1. 1 and 2, right? It's 1 and 2. So like that, all the possible path of x and y is sorted out in here. So now these are the only ways a uh, knight can travel. So once you know this, it's quite easier to populate our solution array with the path. So we know that the initial position is zero. We'll set the very first row and the first column uh, to zero. And then we need another function which will run this function recursively and backtrack for us. So static boolean, I'll say printor util, which takes in the solution array, which is pre-populated with minus 1 and the initial position as 0 which will take in the possible x path the possible y path the row number the column number and the move count the move count increases every time the horse moves to a new position so let's call that function right here if x path initial row and column is 0 and the move, move count is not 0 because it's 1 so we have pre-populated this with 0 and this time it's going to be 1 starting from 1 we'll leave it right here we'll be coming back to this Okay, great. So in here we have to check if this particular path is safe or not. For that we need another function which checks if the path if the next path of the knight is safe or not. Oh no. There's only one written statement. The row should be greater than or equal to zero and less than 8 because it is a chessboard it should be within the chessboard same goes for the column and the important thing in the solution array this particular position must not be any number other than minus 1 remember we pre-populated it with minus 1 so therefore you got to be careful when while assigning this value in the safe method so right here we gotta check and before that uh, we gotta try this we we know that there are eight possible ways for the knight to travel within the chessboard so we have to traverse to each combination of these possible paths for that i'll create a for loop with limit up to eight and now i need two more variables i'll call it int x and y so their initial is 0, 
but within this it becomes row plus expat of i so row is initially zero here plus the expat which is two and you also need y this column is also initially zero y path of i so this becomes nothing but x is two and y is one initially two and one so we check if this particular position is safe on the chessboard x and y so in here in in place of row and column x and y is passed and it checks whether the path is safe or not and if it is safe as you guessed we gotta set that particular position to our move count which we put as one here after we do that we gotta recursively call this particular function again but the row and column is now x and y which is the initial position so from 0 to 0 the knight travel to x and y position assuming that it is safe and now from there it has to travel to another position another one of its possible positions that's why I'm passing the initial position x and y in place of row and column now x and y I mean the row and column is not 0 anymore and here I'm incrementing move count by 1 because 0 is initialized and printed on the solution and 1 was initialized as we passed 1 here and now it is incremented each time the knight travels to a new path and if this is true we're gonna return true if this is not the case we set this particular place to minus 1 we are backtracking we are, we are going back to the position from where we came from and looking for another possible way where the path is safe and lastly we return false well what is the base case as you guess the base case is when the move count here right here we know that in this chessboard the move count can cannot exceed 64 because it's a 8 by 8 chessboard and uh, the most value the move count can attain starting from 0 is 63 and it cannot go to 64 because that will be limit extended for this two dimensional array therefore that will be our base case if the move count is 64 we return true which means that the knight has traveled to all the possible path and it has finally come to an end now we call this in our printer which we called in our main function here which uh, calls this printer util which is this one which calls for safe method right here and recursion and backtracking happens here and finally when all the tour is completed the result comes as true or false to this particular function right here well if it is true we print the solution so I'll write a function to print the solution Before that, it will look really messy, so I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. I'm going to apply a check right here. If this is a single digit or a double digit number, we have printed our sysout statements right here. So if the it's totally optional for you to do print like this, you can just say a single sysout statement. Uh, it's just that the output looks more cleaner this way, so that uh, you'll look at uh, what you on your own. So. Our program and algorithm is ready. Hope it runs well. So run. And here we go. This is our algorithm. So if it's a single digit, I'm printing three spaces. And if it's a double digit, I'm printing a single space and therefore it looks good. But uh, look what happens if you put a single sim simple assault statement. And if I run this now, it gets really messy. Yeah, something like that. So anyway, we got our output. Hope you learned something new today. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed learning Night Store, and comment if uh, you find if you found any mistakes in my explanation. And subscribe and support the channel.
Thank you.